forces act on objects, okay? So when you're talking about forces, you have to figure out what is the object that you're going to be talking about. And physics is this like completely reductionist discipline. We take like one object and we give it all our attention. For, the, for that one moment, that object just feels ever so special. It gets all our attention. Draw a little red line around it and say, that's going to be our object. What are all the forces that act on it? And this is an example of a force identification diagram. And these are talked about in the book, OK? So you draw, imagine drawing a line around something and then say, where are all the places where things like touch this object? Where are all the places that forces can be exerted on it? And forces have to have agents that cause them. So for instance, on the skier, on a rope toe, there's a tension. There's a rope which pulls this way. There's a normal force from the slope, which pushes up from the slope. There's a friction force because he's sliding on the slope. And then there's also the weight force, and the weight force always exists. And that's it. That's it. So ultimately, when we do force analyses of problems, that's the first step, is to figure out what are all the forces that are acting on an object. And we're going to do examples of that. We're going to do examples of that later. Now, here's a crucial thing to keep clear. It's the difference between the object and the agent, OK? The difference between the object and the agent. I want to do a demonstration which illustrates this. And actually, this is going to be a demonstration that uses several people from the class. This is going to be a physics theater exercise. So I'm going to call a bunch of people to come down to the front. We're going to play a game of tug of war. Oh, yes. All right. So I'm going to get a rope here, and I'm going to sneak in right beside you here. I'm going to do a rope. We're going to do a tug of war. Okay, and I'm going to separate you into two teams. And let's take you three are going to be one team. You're going to be over on this side. And you three are going to be the other team. You're going to be over here. Okay. So I want you folks to go ahead and hang on to the rope. You folks are going to hang on the rope. And let's move over this way so we're more centered. There we go. And maybe a little bit away from the podium so that you don't like slam into it. Actually, now we can, we can go forward, can't we? Watch out for that wire there on the floor. Excellent. OK, so we got two teams. Ready for a tug of war? OK, and, and, and I want you seriously to lean into this. I mean, put, put, put some force into this. OK, ready and go. And now stop. OK, we're going to stop. No matter who you pick, it's going to be pretty even. It's going to be pretty even. These folks were losing a little bit of ground. We'll come back to that. But for the most part, it's pretty even. It turns out the forces that your muscles can apply, and we'll talk about this, you can apply three times as much static force as you can at dynamic force. If it's just a question of holding on as, a, as opposed to pulling, you can hold on with much more force than you can pull with. Okay, And so almost no matter how you break up the teams, not much happens initially. Now we're going to do the same tug of war, but we're going to have change it up a little bit. And so we're out of the way of that cord. I want to move this way a little bit. And now we're going to do the same thing. And you folks were having some issues. You were having some issues. And what I saw happening was a little bit of sliding. We're going to even it up a little bit. You folks on this team are going to put bags on your feet. OK, I'm going to give you a couple plastic bags. And you're going to wear plastic bags, one on each foot. There we go. Couple bags for you. Couple bags for you. You need one more. Go ahead and put these on. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna do the same thing again. Oh, you're even tying them. Sweet. Okay, ready. And a one, two, and three. <laughs> Ooh, keep going. Come on, keep going. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And these folks over here that they were winning before, now, they, do, they don't stand a chance. They, don't, they do not stand a chance. All right, we can stop. We can stop there. I saw your, your slide, and you're trying to do that. It's not going to work. But thank you very much. Let's have a hand for our athletes here. I'll take the bags back, and you can leave the rope right where it is. Thank you very much. Here's the crucial, crucial thing. Forces. have agents, forces have objects, OK? So what we're going to do, if we're going to analyze this tug of war, 
let's pick a person to focus on, okay? So we're going to pick like one person to focus on, and we're going to draw them as a dot. Then we're going to draw forces on this person, okay? I'm going I'm I'm to figure out like the forces and which way they go. So if someone's taking part in this tug of war, what forces act on them? Weight. There's always weight force, and that's down. And I'm just going to draw a dot, and I'm going to draw arrows that go more or less in the direction. There's friction force. And let's suppose, yeah, let's suppose the rope is going this way. Can we do the rope this way? That's my rope. Friction force. Which way is the friction force going to be directed, right or left? Left. left. It's going to be directed left. OK, how about the rope? What kind of force does the rope make? Tension. There's a tension force that goes this way. And there better be one more force, N normal force of the floor. Here's the really remarkable thing. Do you notice how I didn't draw down like muscle force? This does not matter. In terms of a, of, a, of, a, of a force analysis of this thing, the fact that these people have muscles and going to the gym and working out and all that stuff doesn't make any difference at all. Because exter the, you have to have external agents which exert these forces. And this is it. The earth is pulling down. The floor is pushing up. The rope is pulling to the right. And friction is pulling to the left. End of story. That's it. There's no muscle force in here. Now keep that in mind, because we're going to have examples like this. And you'll be tempted to put in something like F sub push, or F sub pull, or F sub muscle, or F sub person. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's, it's this limited set of forces that we have. And be aware of that. And here's what we've done. The second part of the tug of war, when we had the people put the bag on the feet, what did that change? Friction. Oh yeah, if that one got smaller, oops, all of a sudden, it's gonna be, uh, the, the rope is going to be like making you slide across the floor. And it doesn't matter how strong you are, if we put bags on your feet, you lose. It doesn't matter how good and kind and strong and special, you lose. It's because there's not the external forces that you need to keep you from doing that.